Hello and welcome to the project demonstration video of Yoyo SmartCard system. The goal of this project was to implement a system that would improve upon the conventional methods of taking attendance and making in-campus payments with the help of RFID technology. The system allows the user to practically eliminate the time it takes for an individual to record attendance and making payments in an institution while ensuring the utmost security and convenience of its users. The system was implemented on Android platform as well as on web platforms to ensure the multi-platform compatibility. Being a fairly large system, the system has quite a few actors. We'll explore them as we go along this demonstration video. Now without further ado, let's start the demonstration with a tour around the Android application and its features. Getting into the application, we can see that the app is smart enough to detect the absence of NFC in the test device and asks the user to turn on NFC if it's available. Clicking the register button, the application recommends the user to log in with ID instead of RFID card since NFC was not found in the device. Searching for the ID leads to the submission page where the user data is fetched and the user is able to edit their password here. Submitting the data, we are greeted into the dashboard. Sliding from the right reveals the navigation drawer from which we can navigate to the profile page as we see here. Going into the about us section shows information about the developer which contains an intent link to Facebook. Now we log out from the application. Moving on to the next section. As we can see, the application detects the presence of NFC in the test device and recommends the user to log in with RFID card. Scanning the RFID card to the device, the app immediately reads the card and fetches the corresponding data for that particular user. Getting into the dashboard, first, let's check the identity of the user. Now, getting into the attendance section, we are greeted with a list of courses taken by this particular student for his running trimester. And clicking H would show us the presence and absence count for that particular course for the student. Going back to the dashboard, clicking the payment section would show a brief record of the transactions made by the user. Let's move on to the web application, beginning with the tour of the landing page. Welcome to the landing page. This page showcases the goals and services provided by this system, taking great pride in real-time attendance tracking and live payment through RFID cards. Getting into the footer area, there are some social media links to reach out to the developers of the project. There are also some privacy disclaimers. Then there is a section that showcases the team behind the project. There is also a contact us page so that anyone who wishes to reach out to us can reach out to us. This is the login page. Now with the tour of the application to an end, let's move on to the attendance module. The attendance module introduces the first actor of the system, which is the teacher. This is the teacher dashboard. The teacher has a section displaying the running courses for the corresponding teacher, a section that shows the wallet information of the teacher, and a live attendance section which displays the list of classes held on that particular date and time. And this is the profile page for the teacher. Getting back to the dashboard, under the running courses section, if we click any details of any course, it shows the list of classes that have been held and another one for the upcoming classes, all with corresponding dates beside them. If we view class number 17 or 30th October, which is the date of filming of this demonstration video, we can see that the system says no attendance have been recorded yet. Now, this module introduces the second actor, which is the student. Let's take a look at the student dashboard. Similar to the teacher logging in, the students are greeted with a beautiful view of the list of running courses, along with the faculty member name and wallet information. Again, this is the student's profile. Now, taking a look at the bottom right corner, the Android application also shows the list of taken courses, proving the proper integration of the system. Now, if we take a look at the system analysis and design course, we can see that the number of presents and absent day for this student matches with the Android application. And like previously mentioned, for the date of 30th October, the student is still absent in that class. 
Getting back to the teacher's dashboard, let's see the teacher initiate the live attendance sequence for the system analysis and design course. After initiating the live attendance sequence, if we take a look at the bottom left corner, a classroom situation is simulated where the students would be tapping their corresponding cards to the reader and the teacher would get live update. Now let's go back and take a look at the students dash and see if the attendance got updated or not. As we can see, for 30th October, attendance is marked and present count is updated in both the web and Android application in real time. Now, after the attendance is done, if the teacher shuts down the live attendance sequence, tapping the card to the reader won't record the attendance no matter what. The teacher also has the ability to remove a student if he wishes to, and this will be updated in the student's application immediately, letting him know of the fact. Now, since the attendance sequence is stopped, swiping his card is of no use, as we can see here. But if the teacher reinitiates the attendance sequence, tapping the card again updates the attendance of the student immediately. Now, let's take a look at the teacher dashboard and see if it was updated or not. As we can see, it was updated. A teacher can grant a student late attendance if he wishes to by adding it manually. However, the system is smart enough to detect if the student has already recorded attendance for that particular date or not, and also if the student does belong to that particular section. This concludes the workings of the attendance module. Let's move on to the payment module. The payment module now introduces the third actor of the system, which is the vendors. Logging into the vendor account, we are greeted with the vendor dashboard which shows a table of the list of items the vendor is currently selling. Now, the vendor doesn't have to be a food seller per se, but for this demonstration, we'll take a look at Khan's Kitchen as the campus vendor. In the vendor dashboard, there is also a wallet section for the vendors displaying the total amount left along with the record of every transaction made. And this is the vendor profile. Getting back to the dashboard, if the vendor wants to add an item to the catalog, they can do that. They can also update the quantities of the products they have, which is shown live. The vendors also have the ability to delete any item as they see fit. Now, suppose there is an order. Let's select a few items to add to the cart as per requirement of the customer. We can see that the selected items have been added to the cart. The vendor can update the quantity of each item as per the need of the customers. And the amount will be updated in real time as well. Now, let's suppose the customer wants something else as well. The vendor can add new products to the existing cart if the customer wants to exclude any item from their purchase, the vendor will simply set the amount as zero. Hitting the calculate button shows the total amount. Now, looking at the lower right hand corner, the Android application of the student says that it has a balance of 2100 taka, and the vendor side is waiting for the payment of the student. Swiping the card to the vendor's reader, the payment is made immediately. And refreshing the view of the Android application, we can see that there is a new entry on top showing the latest payment along with the transaction ID, vendor name and paid amount. The account balance is also updated here. And in the vendor's wallet, an entry is also made with a matching transaction ID to track the payment. Again, taking a look at the student's wallet, we can see the new entry with the same transaction ID has been listed. Now this raises a question, where does the money come from in the RFID cards? Well, this system features a wallet recharge system as well. Logging into the fill up dashboard, let's recharge the wallet of the student who just made a payment to the previously shown vendor. Before entering the values, let's check the Android and web application for the student and check if they are in sync. And indeed they are. As we can see, the system says recharge is successful. And in both the Android and web application, the account balance has been updated as well. The admin sits at the topmost hierarchy of accessible information in the system. 
the admin can add new students as demonstrated and also can edit the information of any student as required. The admin is also responsible for assigning sections to existing students as well as deleting any student entry if necessary. The admin has the same degree of control over the teacher section as well, where he can add new teachers to the system, edit the details of any existing teacher, and also remove any teacher from the system. In the course section, the admin can add new section under any course, delete any course as necessary, and add new courses to the system. And finally, similar to the other sections, for the vendors, the admin can edit the details of any existing vendors. Add new vendors to the system and delete any existing vendors if needed. For all the sections in the admin panel, the system features a search system which pulls up the search result in real time. And this concludes the project demonstration of UIU Smart Card system. And with that being said, thank you for watching.